actually just read a passage to you this morning. Very simple passage. I want, if you've got your Bibles here, you can turn with me. Otherwise, we'll put it on the, on the screen as well. In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, Jesus actually addresses the, the very um, emotion that, that we are dealing with more and more uh, in this time that we live in. And I'm going to read it to you um, from verse 22, Luke chapter 12 from verse 22. It says this, then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? You of little faith. And do not set your hearts on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after these things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. And treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now the heading of this passage is all about worry. And you might feel, listen, Pete, don't, don't. Don't worry. I'm not worrying. That's all good. But I'm sharing with you because Jesus Christ himself deemed this a very necessary topic to address in his time. And you know what? They might not have been dealing with the coronavirus, but they had enough to deal with themselves. Jesus was speaking to his disciples. And literally in this passage, just to understand the context... Just before this, Jesus told them a parable about a rich fool. He literally said this. He said it was a guy that, that had a lot of things. He had a lot of stuff. He had so many things and his, and his harvest was so great that he actually said to himself, listen, I don't have enough place to store all of this. I've got to build bigger barns. I've got to, I've got to create more space so that I can store all my wealth. And then Jesus said this to him. He said, and God came to him and said, you fool. Tonight your life will be taken from you and then who gets what you have gathered? Who gets what you've gathered? He says, listen, you, you might think you have a lot, but what matters most, you don't have any control over. And Jesus told this parable to them to remind them about what is most important. After telling this parable, after sharing this parable with them, he goes on to share with them about worry. You know, because there's a, very, there's a very strong connection between greed and worry. Because greed itself is all about you can never get enough. Have you ever asked anybody, what is enough? Guess what? If they get salary X, they believe Y would be enough. Guess what happens when they have Y? They believe just the next step up would be enough. But I think most of us already have this wisdom. Enough is never enough. We keep moving on if we're not people of enough. If we're not content with, with where we are, with what we have. Greed is always about I don't have enough. Now worry is almost the exact same thing. Worry is being afraid, where greed is, I can't get enough. Worry is, I'm afraid that I won't 
have enough. I can't get enough. And even if I have enough, I'm afraid that I won't have enough. Worry is the emotional reward of material preoccupation. Simply put, worry is what you get when you are concerned about what you have or do not have all the time. Worry, worry, worry. Worry about this, worry about that. Today is all right, but I don't know about tomorrow. Jesus said to his disciples in verse 22 and 23, he said, he said therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. And then he's very specific. He says, do not worry about what you will eat or about your body or what you will wear. Life is more important than food and the body more important than clothes. You see, the reason why he's so specific is because that's exactly what we worry about. What am I going to eat? Am I going to have tomorrow, enough tomorrow? And if tomorrow, I'm, I'm all sorted for this week, but I don't know about, I, I know you guys don't struggle with this, but you won't believe me. There's some people out there running around buying tins of food for about four, five, six weeks, just worrying so much that uh, it's not only that I have not, that they even fight about what they do not have. You say, Piet, but we should be diligent. It's true. But more than that, we should be diligent hearing what God says because this will never change. If the worry about today is dealt with, you know what Jesus says? Tomorrow is enough worry about, worries about itself. You will find something else to worry about if this is over. Come on. <laughs> we, will, we will find something else to worry about. The world will find something and dish up something new to worry about when all of this is over. And you, you can either live within this worry, but Jesus says, do not worry. Do not worry about the food or your body or clothes. Jesus commands us not to worry. You see, the thing with, with the way we do life we sit and watch TV. We, nowadays, all, most ads come through social media. And oh, the only thing they share with you over and over again, they convince you to worry about the things that you don't have that you actually don't need. I know, uh, no, no. It's not, uh, the, is, is it not the case? You really need this? I've got a red one, but you need a blue one. But mine still works, but you need a new one. I've got one, but you need two. You won't believe me, I've heard of places where people worry even about toilet paper, but... <laughs> See, Jesus commands us not to worry. He says life is more important than food, and the body more important than clothes. It's not about this. It's about this. Life itself. Jesus knows if we worry and we worry and we worry, the spiral goes so far that in the end, even if we breathe, we don't live. We don't live because we weigh down by our own worries. Life is more important than a good meal or a new outfit. And it's certainly more valuable well, it's more than worrying about these things. That's for sure. What did Jesus address? He addressed food. He said, don't worry about food. He said, but Piet, we've got, to, we've got to buy groceries. We've got to do all these things. Jesus says this. He says, listen, don't worry about food. He says, and then these words. Over and over he says, consider. Consider. So he says this, consider this. What should I consider, Lord? He says, consider the birds of the air. I had the privilege of, of uh, uh, Friday and Saturday spending a bit of time down south. And you know what? I considered the birds. And I was thinking, we just finished our series on glory. What should I share on? And I was standing with the sun coming up on my back, you know, the sun, you know, falling on my, on my back and warming me up and me with my rod in the water, you know, wanting to get maybe one or two early salmon that just jumped the gun a bit. I was trying, me and Dylan. 
I considered the birds. I saw them. They were there. Not worried at all. Jesus says, consider the birds. And then he says, they don't gather. They don't sow. They don't plant. But still God says, still I feed them. And then he said this. Are you not more? So much more. Listen to this. How much more valuable are you than birds? Have you ever wondered in the scale God has, the way God measures? I mean, God describes us as his children. God describes us as the pinnacle of creation. You might say, Peter, you don't know what kind of individual I am, but you know what God does. And God says, you are the pinnacle of what I made. All of creation looks down on man and woman and see what God has made. And God says, what do you think is the difference between value? How much more? It's not my words. Jesus said this. How much more valuable are you than birds? And still God takes care of the birds. Do not worry about food. Consider yourself. Consider the birds, then consider yourself. Literally, that's what he says in verse 24, the second part. Consider both. Don't just look at the birds. But I want to encourage you in this time where everything is falling apart or people think or they're worried that everything will be falling apart. Because they're actually not falling apart. But we're just worrying that they will. In this time, God says, consider these two things first. Consider the birds. I want to encourage you. Maybe, maybe start your day half an hour early. And walk. Go take a walk. And consider the birds. Look at them. You know what? They will be there tomorrow again. And no matter how many things you find to be worried about... Guess what? The day after tomorrow, they'll be there again. And God feeds them and he takes care of them and they even sing. I know, I'm not, I know that was a feeble attempt, but hey, they sing. They get up, they can't help it. They've got a song in their hearts. He, he actually says crows. If you heard them, Argh. I mean, that, that, that's one of the worst sounds I think a bird can make. Just, just, I mean, my mother-in-law loves it, but I, you know, it's just, it's just like giving a croak or something. But God says, consider them. In Luke, he says, consider the crows. They're scavengers. They just find whatever anybody else and anything else has killed and they eat that. Bottom line, Jesus is saying, stop worrying. God takes care of the crows. You are more valuable, if you believe it or not. You are more valuable than a crow. Would you mind if you don't, if you have the guts, just say it to the guy next to you. If you don't have the guts, just say it to yourself. I am more valuable than a crow. I mean, you can say more than, you know. And then he goes on. He actually goes on. He says, now, you consider the birds, then you consider yourself. He, and then he, he actually describes how absurd worrying is. He says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Now, this is also presented in Mark. And, 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 and Mark, it actually says, who of you can make yourself a little bit taller by worrying? I promise you, it doesn't work. <laughs> you can ask Peter Jr. as well. My whole... My whole School, all my school years, I was, I worried enough about my height. I was in year 10, I, I was still the smallest in the school, not in my year. <laughs> I'm serious. Worry doesn't change that. Worrying would not add a day to your life. When is your day? When is your time up? Do you know? I don't know. You don't know. How old are you going to get? I don't know. You don't know. 
So why would we then, by worrying, take out of all the joy out of the days we have? That's what Jesus is saying. Don't be so concerned. He says worrying is actually absurd. Warriors, a little poem. Warriors feel every blow. And I thought this would be in your line, me and your Ben. It says, warriors feel every blow that never falls. They're always worrying about, he's going to eat me now. He's going to eat me now. If Ben coaches, he's always going aggression. Hey, Ben, we're on the attack. We're not on the defense. But he's always worrying about the, the attack that's coming. You're going to take a few punches because you're so worried about what's coming. Warriors feel every blow that falls and they cry over things that they never lose. Jesus goes on in verse 27 and 28. He says, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor. They do not spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. Jesus said, listen, a lily don't clothe itself. A flower They just present who they are and what, they've made, what they were made to be. God says, I clothe them. I made them. There's an intricate design about each one of these little flowers. Now, may I encourage you, as things get a bit crazy, Go for a walk. Consider the lilies. Consider the kangaroo paw. Consider. Don't consider my garden. It's only grass. But, but actually now that Opa's with us, it actually looks pretty good. You can consider my garden now. But consider the flowers and, and the trees. Consider the lilies. Consider the frangipanis. Consider all the things that grow around us. God says, these flowers don't clothe themselves. I clothe them. He says, even Solomon that had it all were not dressed like these. He says, if God clothes the grass of the field like this that is here today and gone tomorrow, how much more? See again, because if you consider the flower, then next to it, you've got to consider yourself. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into to the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? God says, don't you trust me? I feed the birds. Clothe the flowers. How much more? See, that really got my heart. This very simple phrase. How much more? How much more does God care? How much more valuable are we than the birds of the air? How much more will God clothe me and you? Not only with this kind of beauty. My wife said this shirt looks good at, with this pants and Benin said this shoes work. I always check with them because I'm a bit handicapped where that's concerned. But see, the thing is, it's not about this. God says, I, I clothe you with more in who you are. Clothes, yes, but I adorn you with heavenly blessing. God says, I, I'm taking care of you. You know why? Jesus mentions it two or three times in this passage. He says, your father, your father, our father cares about us, cares about what we eat, cares about us even being clothed. 
And then in verse 29 and 32, you get these don'ts and do's where Jesus just literally goes and says, do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan worlds run, run after these things. If you don't believe, you're going to run after these things. If you don't trust him, you're going to run after all these things. And still in the end, it will be like sand that you gather. Guess what? All the money you make, you'll lose. No, Peter, I, I, well, how do you mean? Well, you're either going to lose it through your life, you know, as we've seen, stocks, this, that. You, you're either going to lose it with your own decisions or one day you won't be there. You can't take it with. You will lose it someday. Yes? What am I saying? Should we not work? No, God says work. God says, don't worry about all these things. Don't be so concerned. Don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink or worry about it. Trust in me. He says this, your father, in verse 29 and 30, he says, your father knows that you need them. Let me ask you. You don't have to answer this to me, but answer this to yourself. Do you believe do you know that your father knows what you need? Yes. You know what? My dad, my earthly dad knew what I needed. My earthly mom, my parents knew what I needed. Sometimes they gave me exactly what I asked for and sometimes exactly what I didn't ask for because I needed it. Yeah? Sometimes they give you what you want Sometimes they give you what you don't want, but they know what you need. Yes? God says, if they know, how much more do you think I know what you need? And one thing that we need is Jesus saying, don't worry. Worry projects the worst. I heard, and I'm, as I finish, I want to share this with you. Worry projects the worst. I heard a story about a man whose wife woke him up at night. They were just married. His wife woke him up, and she was used to living on the farm, so she wasn't used to city life. And it was, she, she heard a commotion. She heard some movement and some sound. She said, hey, wake up, wake up. There's somebody in the house. So he got up. You know, looked through the whole house, you know, didn't find anything. And so he says, no, no, don't worry. You can sleep. Don't worry about it. Next night, same story. She woke him up. She really, really, I heard something. Wake up, wake up. There's somebody in the house. He got up, walked around, got back to bed. She said, did you check in the cupboard, in the hallway? He says, yes. He says, no, but I didn't hear the door. You, you go check there. So he went back, opened the door, shut the door. Goes back, says, okay, I checked it. No, there's no, nothing, nobody's here. This went on for years. Later on, at least, it wasn't daily, but it was just about weekly. His wife would wake him up and say, I said, there's somebody in the house. Really, this time, you've got to go. So he was used to, by the end, going up, opening the doors, shutting the doors. You know, sometimes just shutting a door two or three times to, so that she can hear wherever he's in the house and opening up everything. This, this went on years and years. Until one day, he got up, he walked, opened the door. In the hallway, there's a guy with a mask. The moment he saw the guy, for, for a moment, the thief wanted to run away. He said, sir, stop, stop, please. Don't go. I mean, I've got to introduce it to my wife. She's been waiting for years. You see, for her, she was robbed every single night of her life because of the worry. Do not allow yourself to perpetually go unfed and unclothed, even if you are fed and clothed. I'm fed and I'm clothed, but I'm worried about not being fed and clothed. So now I feel like I'm, I don't have enough. Yes? You get what I'm saying? Come on. When you load the troubles you are anticipating 
upon the troubles you have, it becomes too much to bear. Jesus simply says, tomorrow has enough of its own worries. If you're struggling not to worry, just remember this thing, man. There's enough worries of today. Don't load tomorrows on today. Yes? Deal with what you deal with today. Don't worry so much about what's coming. Jesus says, deal with what is there today. Do not worry about tomorrow. In Matthew 6, the same passage says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day have enough troubles of its own. So what should we do? Verse 31, as I close. Seek first the kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Seek first the king and his kingdom. Put your eyes on Jesus. Know that your protection is in him. Know that no matter what you wear, no matter what this is, Gucci, Ripko, it might say Kmart or Target, but you know what? It's not about all those things. Focus your eyes on the king and no matter what you wear, it will be dressed well. It is when we walk around with, with our eyes focused on the king that we walk around like sons and daughters of the Most High, carrying what we have, not running around worrying about tomorrow, not hoarding and fighting and, and grabbing what we couldn't have and fighting about. Let me not say toilet paper again. Tins, whatever it is, we are not people that were, we were not created to be so self-centered that we would fight one another for a piece of toilet paper or a tin. We were created for the kind of individuals that say, you know what, my trust is in him. What do you need? What do you need? If you don't have, give me a call. Yes. If I've got two rolls, you can have one. Now it's quiet. Fiat, no, 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 no. I've got a shelf in my garage. We're ready, man. Hey, I've got to preach the whole sermon. It's not, it's not the word of Fiat. It's God's word. I've got to bring the whole thing. He says, no, no, no. We are not the kind of individuals that just grab what we can. We are the kind of individuals that say, what do you need? That's what we were made for. We like the birds. We get up with a song in our heart. Ah, maybe that's your song. I don't know. If that's your song, then at least sing it with pride. Yes? We were made to give. God's people are givers. And you know what? Don't. Lose me now and worry. Ah, yes, I see where he's going. It's offering at the end of the service. There will be no offering, not even at the door, okay? So don't worry about that. But let me, let me be very clear. God's people, we were made to be more than just hoarders, gathering and, and taking and making sure that I have enough. We, we were made to be people that says, listen, do you have enough? Do you have enough? How can I help? Don't have food? I've got a plate, which means you have at least half a plate. Come on. What are we doing? We're so worried that we, we know we're not that kind of people. We look in the mirror and we think to ourselves, this is not who we are. Let me remind you, this is not who you are. This is not who we are. We were made to be individuals caring for one another, caring for one another, supporting one another, giving to one another, a smile, support. Listen, I'm there for you. Not, listen, okay, tell me, hey, where have you been, mate? What have you done? Now you stand there, wait a minute, let me check the temperature before you come in. Okay, I'm made, maybe I'm taking a little bit too far now, but listen. God's character is a giving character. You were made in the image of God. Do not lose yourself in the heart or the character of this day. Don't forget who you are. 
Don't forget what he made us to be. Don't forget. We are his. If you need, if you're in trouble, ask your brother. If you know your brother is doing it tough, support and give. Jesus goes so far here as he had to say, you might say, but Piet, what if I give and then I don't have? He goes so far as to say, sell what you have so that you can give. David says, I don't give to God something that they don't cost me anything. Guys, brothers and sisters, friends, this is not who we are. We are not people that walk around so worried that we lose a godly character within us. Yes? Give, give of yourself. Jesus ends in verse 34 with these words, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know what, I can't explain it easier. I can't explain it any more clearer. And just say, if we need, let's say, I don't even have, let, let's take a piece of paper. If I deal with my brother or my sister, no matter how close we are as friends or as family, if I deal with my brother or my sister, this is not the valuable thing. Are you going to have it so you have the valuable thing? Well, no, I want it because I want the valuable thing. This is not what it's about. You are my treasure. For me, how much more precious are you to me than whatever we pursue? If my treasure is here, my heart will be here. If my treasure is here, my heart will be here. If my treasure is there, my heart will be there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a, what a sobering thought to think that we have given things, invaluable things, so much value that we even lose who we are. And Lord, we ask that you would come bring our hearts back to you. We ask that you help us that not only within ourselves, but also for society around us, Lord, we will be a testimony of men and women that do not live by fear, but by power and love and self-control. People that do not just live by fear or worrying, but that we consider the birds of the air and we consider ourselves. We consider the lilies of the field and we consider ourselves and we are reminded that you say, how much more are we valuable to you? Father, we thank you that you know what we need. And we thank you, Lord, that you have made us vessels to support, supply, and encourage, and to give also for what others need. We thank you for who you've made us to be. Help us to be a true reflection of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.